Hi guys, thanks for tuning in. In this video, I'm gonna to relate together vector fields, which is our topic for this chapter, and differential equations, basically material that you learned last year from your AP Calc BC teacher. All right, so for our first example, we're gonna plot the slope field for the differential equation dy dx is equal to y minus x. And the way I'm gonna do this is by reminding you that there's a close association between vectors and slopes. Um, you could think of a vector as a delta x comma delta y, and you could think of a slope m as a delta y over delta x. And you already saw how to go back and forth between vectors and slopes in a previous chapter, because um, when you were in Algebra 1, the equation for a line was y equals mx plus b. But in this course, the equation for a line parametrically is l of t is equal to a starting point p, plus v times t. And in both scenarios, m and v act as our slopes. Um, m is a ratio delta y over delta x, while for a parametrically defined line, v is a vector delta x comma delta y. But you can easily translate back and forth between those two representations of a slope. Um, you can either write your delta y over delta x as a delta x comma delta y, or if you want to go from a vector to a slope, you take the ratio of the y coordinate over the x coordinate. In this case, our dy dx is equal to y minus x. You could think of that as y minus x over 1. So our delta y is y minus x, and our delta x is 1. So if we want to represent this differential equation as a vector field, you would just write the equivalent vector field 1 comma y minus x. And this is going to be a running theme. If you want to turn a differential equation into a vector field, you could just put in 1 for the x coordinate, and you put in your dy dx for your y coordinate. Now I went, I went into Mathematica and I plotted this for you. And what you guys are going to notice is this does not look like the slope fields you're familiar with from your Calc PC class. But the only reason that it's bad, uh, the, the only reason this plot is poor quality is because these vectors are not scaled appropriately. For example, let's look at the vector that we would plot at 0, 10 if this plot went high enough to, to represent 0, 10. So if we computed dy dx here, we would get 10 minus 0. So that means that our field vector would be 1 comma 10. Oof, that's a really large vector. Think about the magnitude of that vector. Um, so we want to be careful here. The magnitudes of these vectors can get large enough that the plot can be really hard to interpret. So our fix is to say instead of having instead of plotting an unscaled vector field, we could scale down our vector field. Um, basically, it's a trial and error process. You just try some numbers until you settle in on a number that makes the plot look pretty good. So 0.17, uh, it's not magical. I, I, I literally went into Mathematica and tested out numbers until I had a picture that I liked the look of. And there it is. Now, this looks a lot more like the slope fields that you plotted in your Calc BC class last year. Um, I noticed two differences. One is uh, there's arrowheads. We're going to keep those in this class. We're not, we're not going to draw slope fields the same way that you drew them last year. Um, the arrowheads do a better job of representing the direction of our vectors. So we do want to see that because it'll tell us the direction that our trajectories are flowing in as we're plotting trajectories, um, which in this case are solutions, solution curves to our differential equations. Um, but the other thing you'll notice that's a little bit different, the magnitudes are still varying. Like if you look up here in quadrant two in the upper left-hand corner, those are large magnitudes. And if you look near the origin, um, those are smaller magnitudes. And when you guys were plotting slope fields last year, you just drew all of your vectors as the same size. Um, one thing we could do to further reduce the clutter is not just plot a scaled vector field, um, but we can also um, go ahead and produce unit vectors and then scale those. So we could strip out um, some of this magnitude information and get a slightly better plot depending on what we're looking for. Now, I like the plot that's currently on the screen. Um, I like seeing differences in magnitude. However, there are certain situations where 
you're not going to get the plot to look nice because the differences in magnitude are just too large across your um, ac across your plotting window and you get essentially a useless plot. So while I like the picture that's on the screen, let's see what we would, would, would do if we wanted to eliminate some of the distraction that we have from adding magnitude into this, into this plot. So what you do is you normalize each vector and then scale it appropriately. So normalizing means dividing those vectors by their own magnitude, in this case, by this square root expression, this square root of a dot product expression. And there we go. That looks a lot like what you were used to from last year, just with some extra arrowheads on each of those vectors. But that's that's pretty good. That's that's pretty close to the slope fields that you guys are used to. All right, so let's plot a trajectory onto our slope field. So we're going to we're given a starting point, one comma one. And here's a trajectory. And you could tell it's a pretty good trajectory because um, remember the, the property that a trajectory must have is that it's uh, the field vectors um, whose tails are on the curve must be tangent to that curve. And you guys can see here that it follows that general guideline. Now, if you ever see a trajectory that looks like this, this is a bad trajectory. In fact, it's not a trajectory. This would be a warning sign. If you ever see field vectors that are not tangent to the trajectory, um, that's a warning sign that you do not actually have a trajectory. But um, the curve that is uh, was originally plotted on the screen, that's a good quality trajectory. Now, um, what does that trajectory represent? If you think back to your Calc BC course, um, this is a solution to our differential equation. It's a solution curve to our differential equation that satisfies this initial condition of one comma one. So this trajectory is, in, now it depends on how you get the trajectory, but if I plot it using Euler's method, this trajectory is an approximation of a particular solution to the differential equation. Now, if I get the trajectory by solving the differential equation, um, then it is actually the particular solution to the differential equation satisfying the initial condition. Now, um, you would pick and choose how to get your trajectory based on your differential equations knowledge, and just based on how easily solved your differential equation dy dx would be. Um, for this example, this is something that a student taking a differential equations course would be able to solve, but a Calc BC student would not be able to solve. So for Calc BC, you would use Euler's method to approximate this trajectory here. If you're taking a DiffEq course, you actually would be able to solve this. Um, it's not a separable differential equation, um, but there is a way of doing it. Um, and, it and you'll see it in a future course if you take differential equations next year. Um, so I did actually solve this differential equation just to verify that I had a good quality trajectory because um, I drew that picture using, uh, using PowerPoint. And so I wanted to make sure that I had a good quality solution, but I did verify it and it looks pretty good. So guys, I can do one more example here just to show you that this is a general recipe that's going to work every time. So if I need to plot the slope field for y prime equals cosine of x and also plot the trajectory through negative pi comma zero, just remember that we're going to get our slope field by taking our equation and plotting the vector field one comma cosine of x. And that's how I generated the plot you could see on the screen. And then if I want to, uh, plot a trajectory through negative pi comma zero. Um, I actually just did this in PowerPoint. So there's my, there's my curve. Um, and so this is an approximate solution curve to this differential equation. In this case, you didn't really need to approximate it because you know how to solve that differential equation. So we can actually skip Euler's method if we want to and get an exact solution. And it should not be surprising to you that this curve goes through the origin and looks a lot like a sine curve, right? If you think about the relationship between cosine and sine. And finally here, um, I do wanna remind you guys that there are vector fields in the universe that are not gradient fields and are not slope fields. Just the general vector fields that we don't really associate with any other mathematical objects. So here's an example. Um, this is a perfectly good vector field. 
it's a it's an interesting vector field in fact um, because it does have sinks and sources we've got a sink and we've got a source um, we also have some other interesting points it looks like we have a saddle point here at the origin as well um, so a vector field that is not a gradient field can still be a very interesting vector field um, and just because we're not interpreting this vector field in the uh, the realm of differential equations still it's an interesting vector field so just keep in mind here some vector fields are just vector fields for our purposes um, but there's still some interesting mathematics that we can do with those vector fields and in fact that'll be the focus of my next video um, is to talk about how a vector field can act upon a curve so we're going to take two separate mathematical objects a curve and a vector field and we're going to see how they interact with each other so guys again we still have trajectories and these trajectories still head into our sinks um, just keep in mind that in this particular case this sink is not associated associated with a maximum there's no max on a surface here so in this scenario sinks are just sinks sources are just sources trajectories are just trajectories we do not have um, a surface associated with this example and we're not thinking about these trajectories as solutions to differential equations in this case i made a little venn diagram with you so that's how i'll close out this video so the world of vector fields is a large universe here of m comma n's and within that world uh, a subset of vector fields are when we think about slope fields again this is a recipe one comma our differential equation and then we also have gradient fields df dx comma df dy um, but most of our focus this chapter will just be on vector fields in general we, you'll see some triad problems that talk about slope fields you'll see some triad problems that concentrate on gradient fields but in general remember that vector fields are the outside of that venn diagram that's the bigger universe of mathematical objects and some, sometimes we're looking at the subset but not always all right guys thank you for tuning in in my next video i'm going to talk about vector fields acting upon curves